Okay, hi everybody. This is a quick walkthrough of the crime scene investigation setup for lab number one, the tools of biology. We start with an observation um, of a crime scene and your group gets a call, a 911 call that informs you that the life of Mount Sac Millie has come to an abrupt end and the coroner's office informs you that Millie's death was caused by blunt force trauma uh, with an object that weighs between four and five grams uh, with a length of 45 to 50 or 55 millimeters. The coroner also tells you that blood was collected at the crime scene and a blood alcohol content of 0.12 was determined from that sample. The goal of your team is to examine the crime scene, gather crime scene evidence, analyze the evidence, and come to a conclusion on which suspect or suspects you think were involved with the death of Mount Sac Millie. The number and values of particular items that you see in here that I use as an example may change, so I'm providing this video really for more procedural effects uh, than anything. So uh, make sure you review that and uh, use the uh, idea and the techniques that I'm showing you here rather than the absolute answer that I give you at the end. Uh, your team is gonna analyze uh, several different types of samples carpet fibers, soil samples, uh, the weight and length of potential blunt objects that could have been a murder weapon, blood type, and blood alcohol content. So let's start with the carpet fibers. As you collect evidence, it's important to label each slide and note where you collected the evidence because you don't wanna go back to your desk and then have a whole bunch of slides and not really know where you collected the crime scene data from the carpet fibers and soil can be analyzed very much the same way. You can put your sample on a slide and you can examine them under a dissecting scope. You can also use the handheld scope that may be available in lab. And um, when you analyze the soil and carpet, um, you, you might find it helpful to put two under sometimes, maybe at the same time. So maybe you put two carpet fibers from say the crime scene and a suspect if you wanna sort of match them that might be helpful. For blood typing, uh, you're gonna need to use the blood typing trays uh, with the three wells that are usually located somewhere along the back lab bench. And you're gonna place several drops of your sample into each well, and then you're gonna add antibodies as labeled on the tray. So antibody A, for example, goes in the A well, um, and antibody B goes in the B well. And then using separate toothpicks, you're gonna stir each well for about 10 seconds and wait to see if agglutination or clumping occurs. Agglutination or clumping signifies that the antibody has bound to a particular antigen uh, of that particular type. So if uh, A and the RH wells, for example, are clumpy or they agglutinate at the end, then your sample uh, would be determined as being blood type A positive none of your samples show any type of clumping whatsoever. The A doesn't clump, the B doesn't clump, and the RH doesn't clump, then that ends up being blood type O negative, for example. For blood alcohol content, you need to first measure the volume of alcohol that would be found in the particular containers. So we can fill these with water, and then we can pour that water into a beaker or a graduated cylinder, uh, or um, a couple of them to determine the total volume of that particular type of um, alcohol. Then using the information on the amount of alcohol in each type of drink, then we're gonna use that information to determine the total number of drinks uh, that would be consumed uh, if that volume had been um, consumed by the uh, suspect one, suspect two, and so forth. So that's what we're gonna use next. So then what we have to do is we have to also consider the different um, suspects weight and Mount Sac Millie's weight. So we use this chart then, and we use the known weights of suspect one, two, and three in Mount Sac Millie to determine what blood alcohol content that would be um, if they consume that drink at their particular weight. So we use that chart to match that to blood alcohol content. To analyze potential weapons, we will weigh and we will measure various blunt objects found at the suspect's house and perhaps Mount Sac Millie's as well 
to analyze this data, uh, we're going to make uh, two different graphs. One graph will be the length relative to the weight of the object, and we're also going to make a graph that shows the average weight for each object. And so your data might look something like uh, this when you're done. Okay. After everyone collects the data, you're going to fill out this first chart, which allows you to sort of accumulate um, the descriptive data all in one spot. Then using the second chart, you try to determine if any of the samples best match uh, the crime scene. Uh, and if that's true, you place an X where that might occur. So for example, if the carpet and soil best match uh, at the crime scene suspect one, uh, then you put an X in the carpet and um, soil boxes for suspect one. Um, if the blood matches suspect two, you place an X in that column. And so ideally, when you are done, having most or all of your data points point or lead you to one suspect or another um, should give you a better level of confidence in your final conclusion. Okay, hopefully that helps you wrap up the crime scene so you can finish up uh, lab number one, tools of biology, and talk to you later.